and mid-game setups. I mean, Fnatic showed in their last series they're very happy to pick a try call. This game less of that kind of a draft with the bat, but yeah, it seems secret almost have that kind of idea in mind. I'm trying to think what the Fada hero could be. We've seen I've, we've seen Fada play Razor, right? In the past, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I think Razor. I think when Fada he wasn't playing off. Yeah, he wasn't off lane. <laughs> he was the Razor. He was the Razor. Uh, his most picked, by the way, of all time, is now Puck. It is Puck, yeah. Puck's decent. They've yeah. got, that gives them the bomb. That gets a really good counter versus the uh, versus the bat. Lion insta hex can be a little bit annoying, though. But Actually, yeah, normally you almost always see at least some pseudo partner for a life so even if it's yeah. just like an Earth Spirit roll. Yeah, I think the Nyx. Yeah, I think Puck. the Puck is the Puck or the Nyx are the two most. Like, I think Nyx now is. I think that has to be banned by Fnatic, right? Yeah, Tinker, Bat, is, seems yeah. like the dream Knicks game. Yeah. It's a tough Tinker game. Just the supports alone give uh, yeah. good ways of dealing with a Tinker. I'm really curious why Fnatic actually grabbed that one here. It's not like a counter to lifesteal by any means. It's okay mid against a Razor, but I don't... So, so um, they want something to stall the game out? What's the Envy hero? Terribly? And banned for two. Yeah, if it wasn't oh, banned, yeah. it would be Sorry, good. Yeah, yeah his TB is uh, PL. So, so he's going to go for a bristle then. I don't think that carries Hutton. I think it's a Spectre, not. right? Yeah, Spectre. Um, some kind of big farming Battle Fury S carry, maybe. Um, is Deuce still there? It is. Oh, yeah, Deuce is still there. Deuce's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Deuce seems good. I think less, like, Deuce with Tinker just seems a bit, yeah, a bit awkward, awkward yeah. and odd. Yeah, yeah. You've got two heroes that want to use the jungle stacks a bit. Deuce always seems to do better in the mid lane as well. I think their team fight, if they pick Deuce, is really weak, though. Or Fnatic, that is. But what carry for Envy can yeah, give you team fight is much the Yeah, I really yeah. does bring it together. It's a very odd Tinker pick because of that. How would a Jolero fit in there? Uh, seems better than, better than others, but I think that I... To me, it's with the Chen pick, you've got no actual push coming out from your cores. It seems like a very weird Chen... I mean, the Chen pick was first, so it was fine at the time, but now yeah. it seems like a weird Chen draft um, with this Tinker getting picked up. Yeah, they don't have ways to force objectives on the side of Phoenix, just the Chen. And we assume it's a DJ Chen. Yeah. Which he played the Lion earlier. They mm. ban out Void. Mm -hmm. That's a, that would have given them Team 5 from the carry position. Yeah. Fnatic yeah. bans Brood. Actually, the, the void, void Tinker would have been a good way to round out Fnatic's draft. Oh, so it is Whoa. a draft. So we oh. said that at the very beginning. The beginning but could be a Drow strat, and it is a Drow strat. It's just a bit of an old one. Yeah, it makes got, sense got against like an old boy. Yeah, against a Life Sealer type draft, it's it's fine. Against Razor, you're not worried about the static link. They haven't got good heroes for jumping the Drow. No Life Sealer. You almost have to get a Life Sealer in Festival, I feel, which is where the Brood ban is a bit odd. But Brood is like the hard counter to Drow. Yeah, I think Puck Nix, right? I think, like we said, I think those two are probably the more dominant. If not, they just go for just Fada staples. Yeah. So what, Underlord? Was one of the other ones? Storm, they're gonna go for so it, full it on Tricor. Whoa. It is gonna be the Fodder Razor then, it right? It is, yeah. Like it we're, is also like we're kinda saying that one. So they just really want it's I mean, this is a nice storm game <laughs> in a way to catch the Tinker and the Drop, but there is a line there that can yep. be a little bit annoying. That's a surprise draft from Secret, isn't it? Mm. For mm. both teams. Yeah. yeah. They're a little bit, more, little bit more in their wheelhouse, though, for Nanak, uh, in terms of players that have played recently on those heroes, but an odd way of getting to the drill in the yeah. end. Um, what do you two make of it, Gods? Which way? I'm still going to go with Secret. I think their support duo fits the draft and game a lot better. The ET uh, disrupt, just give team fight catch, and the Chen just still feels like it's going to struggle to find a place in this game, even with the Drow push element. I okay. think, yeah, I think Fnatic's lineup has to actually make like no mistakes in this game in order to have a chance. I think Secret's got a tr good, nice tri core coming out. I think they should have a really good way to take team fights with the ET disrupt, like you're saying. Okay, good catch for Tinker too. These two have uh, gone against the drow somewhere. Toby One is weeping quietly into his coffee. Uh, let's hope we can pick him up with game number one because we're about to get into it as we go head to head. Remember, this is a best of three semi final upper bracket of Group A. It's Team Secret versus Fnatic. Let's find out who takes game number one. 
That's right, a lot on the line here for this Secret versus Fnatic matchup, especially a little bit more so for Fnatic. I would say this is an opportunity for them to be able to prove themselves against one of the top three teams in the world and really prove that this roster shakeup and being able to add in Abed and pick up Universe as well is all for the better for this year. Yeah, I think for them it's, I don't know, hit back at the critics a little bit. I feel yeah. like this was the correct choice, that uh, this is something that's going to ultimately work out for them. Not that I think of all people that don't care about stuff like that is probably Envy. Because he's <laughs> he's going to do whatever he feels like is right anyways. Envy's definitely gone through his... Uh, he's gone through the ringer when it comes to outside criticism. Yeah. I think once you've been through it enough times, like... You just stop caring. Yeah, you just got to develop a thicker skin. How are you them. feeling about the draft, though? Because... I, I will tell you, as soon as I saw the, the Razor and the Lifestealer, I felt like laning phase was kind of over for Fnatic. Yeah. I mean, the thing about their lineup, though, is like they have this one playmaker in this uh, this ET, which kind of leads me to the idea that like the Storm is going to have to play more of an early game style. Like okay. They're going to have to do more things like the Invest Bomb a little bit earlier. Like The lead up for Storm is a little bit different now because Kaya, it feels like a really bad item nowadays. Really? Yeah. What, what, what about Storm. it? Because I, I remember you were like, not oh, so long ago, you were all about the, the Kaya first on Storm. The, when they nerfed it. Yeah. I, it, was I, it, was like, just, it literally just yeah, hit it me like, that hard. It gave, it gave you like double the value or something like that. Because mm. like, when you normally you build items like that, you get, especially when you play the hero a lot, and obviously I play Storm a ton, you gain this like general sense of things. I think mid one really liked the Kaya too, but um, talking to some of the more prevalent Storm players, they feel like the item just isn't very good anymore. Like it doesn't give you the value that it used to. So we are going to be having uh, dual lanes coming out from Team Secret, a Razor Elder Titan, which pretty much means that no matter what kind of duo that was coming out from the Lion plus one, they weren't going to be able to beat that. And then on the other side, they were going to have Lifestealer and maybe a Disruptor hanging around. Disruptor probably most free, but looks like the lanes are actually going to be dodged out here by Fnatic, and they're going to be able to run their, their Draw Ranger into the Lifestealer and the Batrider against the Razor. That's the lanes that they want to have, right? I think so. Like, ideally, you don't want the Drow to be against the Razor. I, you yeah. don't really feel great about being against the Life Stealer either, because the Life Stealer doesn't really die, and you have kill potential on her right. at some point. But that would require Puppy and or Yap sort of make the rotation over. But I, I don't know if uh, Fnatic necessarily win this, or uh, if uh, Secret necessarily wins this like two on two trade. Because Tinker's so much better at harassing, and yeah. Lion has really high base damage. Well, that is certainly quite the bounty that mid one just picked up. A triple kill of creeps off of one remnant and one right click. Denied. So he's not doing too bad for himself in CS, but Abed will definitely uh, slowly but surely wear yeah, they on have, that lead. They have a uh, they have drawer too, so it's really hard for this storm to contest. Now, how about this life stealer? Like with the drone ranger plus the Chen, can they actually threaten the life stealer, or is it still going to be just too Ranger difficult against this highly self-sustained hero? Ideally, Ace, no matter what, his it, when he's level two, he gets he could always just rage TP. Yeah, so he shouldn't be able to die. He's gonna be. But if they force him out, can't they at least get get the tower? Yeah, I think that's the the hope is that yeah. you can just bypass that entirely. Okay. Is right, the support is finally leave. Yeah, looks like we're back to having a 1v1 like for a small period of time. The Southeast Asian Kings. Yeah, they really are, right? Yeah, mid one and uh, Abed. Bulba has such high, like, has, he has such high praise for mid one. Like, he think or uh, not mid one, for Abed. Abed. Yeah, 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 he thinks that Abed is like the most talented mid yeah. in the world. No doubt when they heard Abed was even seen that certainly had to be one of the many killing blows for digital chaos. There was a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of overkill, perhaps? Yeah, it's just... Oh, no. I mean, I heard he was homesick. Yeah. You can't really prevent stuff like that from happening. But probably, especially games like this, like I'm so interested to watch because for me anyways, there's like a clear division of like who the best is yeah. in the region. It's like or in Dota right now, like in the scene, there's uh, their secret. I think has had the best overall performances so far. Yeah. I don't think anybody would doubt that. They won Dreamhack. They won Captain's Draft. Uh, they look very good.
they also got second at um, MPSL right Hamper. Now he's pick up here on Abed with a stop as well, easily being able to pick up the first blood for Bit One, helping to win that lane. Yaps or even going as far as diving the tier one tower just to get more damage on Pyline Dive. Now the dive up at the top lane though, the Bat Rider is gonna get run over, or running over rather, the Razor. This is why they wanted to be able to have that matchup. You can see the Life Stealer is now gonna try and put himself against that Bat Rider. They could just switch though. Like Envy still has his TP so he can swap out. Yeah. Though Batrider doesn't, though, because he actually TP back to but his But he can tower. walk there if they want to continue to have the Razor, mm -hmm. the Batrider versus Razor. And when you have a player like Universe, ideally, you always give him the favorable matchup. Yeah. Because Universe is not the type of player that you want to sack. Like, this is a guy um, that EG at least perceived he wants farm. And so, especially on a team like this, because Envy is so sacrificial, like, you don't pick Drow unless you're a sacrificial guy. Yeah. Dro is the, I'm a carry, I'm gonna help out the other cores. Hopefully they, they do well enough to carry me kind of hero. Like he's never gonna be the centerpiece one position that you think. And I think that's a really cool evolution like that has allowed Envy to continue to stay successful. Like when they played at the summit, that was so good. Yeah, so we're gonna be caught by the Chen Lion combination here. Disables plus the neutral creeps. Not really any support that can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against that one. Mid one's gonna try and help out with a Fada. See if they can actually chase down DJ here. They should be able to. Don't really see any way for DJ to possibly get out of this one. Has a TP, but the damage is just gonna come too quick. That being said, it did pull a lot of heroes of Secret all the way into their tier two safe lane. Yeah, they brought three heroes over. I think that's fine. The Storm, I think, started chasing down too. Yeah. Mid one brought over. Yeah. But. Yeah, as, as I was saying, like there's Secret, uh, VP, and Liquid. Yep. And then there's the rest of the field, right? And it's hard for me to like distinguish between the rest of the field. Like, earlier, yeah, they're all they're all kind of yeah, like just kind of blend together in that regard. And so, you know, we're still kind of waiting for teams to join them. I think VGJ, uh, Thunder, not to be mistaken with Storm, is probably like <laughs> the next team up in that regard. And it, how it, dare it, you insult Banana Slam Jamma like true. that? It's a, it's just cool to see like teams like that, like pop up. And become yeah. more prevalent, and you know you hope for the different regions so TI is like as competitive as possible, right? Yeah, this is certainly one one of the most promising, I would say, that it's kind of second tier, whatever, of the the top pro teams. Fnatic with a pickup of both Abed and Universe. Mm -hmm. No matter how many good things you have to say about Excalibur as well as Ohio, I think many people, many analysts, will agree that this is. Um, Quite the upgrade. Yeah. I mean, I I kind of want to make this point. It's like when you when you're thinking about in the context of TI, like why people wonder like why there are roster stops when teams seem to be doing okay. It's because you're not aiming for just doing all right. Right. I think people have, especially when you when you don't play at that competitive level, uh, or you haven't experienced being around it, you don't want to just be all right. It's not enough to just be okay. Win some games here or there. Like for me, that's the definition of mediocre. It's like you take a game once in a while, maybe very occasionally you get a top four. But from a competitive player's perspective, like that's not very, that's not good. It means every tournament you're ending on a loss. Yeah, exactly. Nobody likes like, that. That doesn't feel. Yeah. That's why we have so many roster swaps in Dota because we're not thinking about the context of like how are they doing in regards to the average. They're always comparing themselves to like how are you doing in comparison to the people that are consistently winning. And that all starts with being the best in your region. Fnatic certainly weren't not so long ago, but... Yeah, Maneski has kind of cemented themselves with that for a while, but yep. this is a good step. Like, if they could take a best of three uh, from Secret, who I feel like haven't lost a best of three in a while, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a promising first step. Like, these games are always so fun because now it's just dethroned. You know, like, are you the team that can topple it? Because right now, Secret has this aura around them. Mm -hmm. It's like, who's going to be the first team to make them bleed? You know, Liquid, after TI, like, there was this time period when after they won the, the minor, it felt like they were just going to keep rolling. Mm -hmm. But yeah, once yeah, yeah. you cut them, it leads to these things where they start to have a little bit more doubt, and other teams don't respect them as much. Like, there's not that vibe anymore that you get from playing against them. I remember us casting the, the Star Ladder. It was the first tournament of the season right yeah. after TI. When they played Maneski, Maneski, they, had, they, they feared them. Yeah. And they made so many mistakes as a result. Like, if that was any other team, Maneski would have won that series. Like, if the names were blanked out. Our laning phase 
does seem to be unfolding with a slight lead to Fnatic. Kill score being 2-2, two to two, but a bit of a 1k gold lead for Fnatic right now. But they are getting a lot of farm on Tinker, which is probably the most important thing. Yeah, this is kind of... He's such an important hero, especially since there's a direct counter to him on Radiant side. Mm -hmm. Like Storm is very nice against Tinker, because he always has you always have the option to just kill him straight up. Uh, it's an interesting little uh, evolution of Chandra Ranger them actually being able to farm Ancient super early because that helped the neutral creep taking that up. Abich is going to TP away. Ace is going to force him out of it. Highlight die, mid lane, looks like they're going to be able to run over this line, but at the same time, Storm has already been picked up, and Universe is just going to try and stay team. ahead of Fada as best as possible. Fada should be okay. Yapsor making sure that he's able to get back to the tower safely. Yeah. Big rotation by Fnatic, but it does net them a very important kill in that Storm Sphere. Yeah. We just talked about like the evolution of Envy. It's like, he's going to run there. I've never been more confident that a carry is just going to say, like, I don't care about my waves or anything like that. Yeah. When we're watching the summit, he's like this level 3 Luna coming into Lucent Beam to try to get one more right click on people. <laughs> First team is like, it's wild. And uh, that's, you know, Envy hasn't always been my favorite player because I felt like sometimes like his play style is very erratic. But I feel like this like evolution of him going from like this pure one position where we remember him from like Frankfurt, you know, when he was playing Ember Spirit to playing this like sacrificial role and adapting to the rest of his team is like a really veteran look. Who are these people looking at? When you look at these carries and they have to change their style, is it Mutumba Man? Is that who they're kind of like modeling this be behavior off of? Like who's who's kind of pushing them to be that more self-sacrificial safe uh, lane? I think when you look at like Matu and what he was able to do for Liquid, it's the fact that like if you vary the amount of looks that you give a team, uh, it makes it like more interesting. It makes your team a little bit more diverse, right? And yeah. that's always been the point of Dota is like to make things as complicated as possible for the enemy team to like keep showing them different looks. It's kind of like uh, I remember I read something about like football, like American football. It's like uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna run 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 the ball, and then eventually like you'll pass and they won't expect it because they're like lulled into this like false sense of security, mm -hmm. like this fa like, false sense of meta. And it's kind of the same thing with Dota is that you need to keep giving enemy teams like consistently like different looks because everyone gets used to seeing like the same thing over and over again and then right. liquid introduces a style where any three of their cores can potentially be a carry right and now envy is doing the same thing like sometimes he'll play tb but oftentimes like he can play the lunar weaver and just run around and he can adapt to the game and it really does seem like we're pushing that idea to the extreme with even laning phase being very hard to figure out who's who's going to be where uh, attempt to gank here from Universe is going to be able to grab up Fada. They just lay down the figure of death, hoping to be able to burst them before the TP rotations could put a stop to that gank. They are going to be able to get the glimpse back, though, and Universe trying to TP out, but will be interrupted by the stomp. So it's going to be a trade-off, and a fair trade-off at that, because even though it's a Razor, this is a three-position Razor that's pretty poor in net worth right now, and only sitting at 3k. Well, the Batrider for Fnatic, despite him being the quote-unquote offlaner, he's actually top of the net worth right now, yeah. thanks to his one-on-one -on -one match. Up. Storm and Tinker are very close in that regard. Yeah. yeah. That for me that's like such an interesting discussion. Like the evolution is just like how Dota's like consistently changed in mm -hmm. that regard. And like how the players you, you look at players like Envy and Fear, like they have to consistently adapt to like who's around them, you know. So like Secret, of course, when they have MP, they're gonna make MP is a little bit more sacrificial in that regard. So they make mid one more of their focus, right? But then they have Ace and Mid One is then able to adapt so that Ace can continue to play like his style of playing this one position. And especially when you have an offlaner like Universe, like, this guy likes farm. He likes to be near the top of the net worth. He's not, he's not like some Fada that will just run in. <laughs> yeah, he'll die like ten times. Like Universe has never quite been that player. Because if you think of his iconic heroes, you think of like Void, and yeah. Void is a hero that needs farm to be useful. It's probably one of the greediest off laners you could ask for. Yeah, and so Envy has to adapt, and I think this kind of like benefits him as well in that regard because he has a player who can, who's a little bit more willing to make space for him. Whereas, like, for example, Arteezy is, like, more of a traditional one position than he is somebody that I think will be a little bit more malleable, like Envy. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's Ignoring the, the kill score and the net worth lead right now, do you think, do you feel like one team is getting more out of this laning phase? Do you think they're happier with the way this game is going right now? Uh, I think that... 
Because I look at it, I'm like, oh, the Seeker's farming, but at the same time, so is the Storm Spirit, right? Yeah, I think Fnatic's probably a little bit happier. Okay. Because uh, they can sense that their Bat Rider's doing very well. Like, they probably know that Bat's at the top of the net worth chart, and Tinker's been relatively uninterrupted in farm. Like, there's just, like, weird hump work. Tinker, it's really scary to play the early game, then the big game. Uh, because things like kind of quiet down and everyone begins to farm and get into these like progressions and then there's like a two minute period after that where you don't have blink dagger or it's scary again then you have blink dagger and it's okay smoke up mid one does have the life sealer inside him he's gonna go for universe universe unable to get the lasso right away he's now gonna be disabled but what a beautiful silence coming out from eternal Heavy trying to focus down mid one successfully two they get the sent back on universe as well as the shrine usage just to make sure he survives and that's gonna be the first life sealer bomb that fails miserably for secret as fanatic group up nice and quick are able to turn things around we talked about that though, because they don't have this playmaking offlaner that Storm and Life Sealer are gonna have to do these bombs yeah. faster than they expect, and it feels very forced. And this is very nice from Fnatic right now. Like they're they're playing very well. Like the difference between, for example, in the Planet Dog series that we saw, like Planet Dog, it felt like they were the ones that felt like they were forced to make moves at all times. Mm -hmm. Or like in this game, Secret feel like they have to make moves. Universe, lassoing up. Ace with the Invis Rune was able to find a jump onto him and kind of forces out the lasso, but not much else is going to be able to come of it. In fact, if anything, Ace may be run down here with the double silence Perfect. actually coming out. Too much slows. He's trying to armor oh, the target. Nice. Really good stomp just in time. Ace managed to keep himself alive just long enough for Yapster to save the day. Meanwhile, Puppy did actually manage to get the kill on Abed. It looks like him and the Storm Spirit combined powers to bring down the carry of Fnatic. Yeah, they needed something like that pretty badly. Because Fnatic were, I mean, Fnatic are doing a very good job right now. I was surprised that they beat Cole that badly, but this is, I mean, this is looking like a really solid team. It's only 15 minutes into a game, so it's like hard to draw too many conclusions. Yeah. And there's a full best of three to play, but so far, like, like what I see out of them, at least in the early game, they're playing very fluid. They're not hard committing on anything. Their plays, like, nothing feels very forced. Uh, everything feels like a very natural progression. And it's actually secret that, for the first time in a really long time, that I see a little bit uncomfortable. Do they need to continue to try and be the aggressors that we were seeing earlier? Well, definitely if it comes to defending Roshan here. Envy and DJ. I remember this is actually came up um, at the summit, yeah. had OG on the couch, they talked about the eternal Envy Roshan. Envy talked about the eternal <laughs> Envy Roshan. He said, like, sometimes we just have these, like, random Roshans where we just go in. <laughs> you gotta you gotta know. That's the thing, though, is, like, Puppy played with Envy, so he knows this is happening. Yeah. Like, 100%. It's such an eternal Envy thing. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, like, but something about Roshan. It's, it's, only, just... it's only, like, when you play with Envy that I was told that you quite understand. <laughs> because, like... Other teams, it still works against other teams, which is why he does it, right? Mm -hmm. It still consistently works against other teams where it's like Roshan has fallen at like 18 minutes. You're like, what? You're just like, what? Oh, I didn't expect that. Yeah, but when you play against Envy, Puppy's like, not today. <laughs> They're going to foil their plans for now, but Fnatic are going to keep on going. Despite not being able to pick up that Aegis, they're still going to try and go for a very serious push here at the top lane with the Tinker helping to defend them from any aggression. The Drow Ranger to lay out the damage, but it looks like that Elder Titan Stomp combined with the field coming out from the Razor lays waste to that creep wave, and they very quickly give up and go back to farming. I don't know, this game just feels, um, feels very awkward. In it's regard. just very relaxed in a way that Oh, but this it is, seems like both teams are almost kind of happy with what's happening in the game, and they're is, just like, yeah, this is chill. It's kind of like when both teams are like evenly skilled, though. It's yeah. When you're going to feel this way, like this lull, because like when Secret played against Planet Dog, there wasn't like a lot of respect, right? They just ran at them. They didn't care. But when you're playing against a team that you feel like is matching your tempo, you're less inclined to take these like risky maneuvers, you know? You're so not you think those like two slap downs that Fnatic gave to Secret kind yeah, of like... It resets the game made a little. They take a step back and they're like, okay. But at the same time, like, you know, Fnatic also had a few sloppy fights where they were also tempo matched. 
and so they're a little bit more reluctant to take these fights. Like when you when you have these teams, like the warding's a little bit better, the speed of the game is a little bit better. Those moves work, yeah. <laughs> and one is just really yeah. fast is a little bit better. Like, uh, and so you you try not to force these kinds of things a little bit too much, you know? Yeah, because it reveals a lot. Like, it's it's stuff you won't quite notice, but at the same time, like now both sides like should have a better understanding of wards are, for example, because mm. both were able to see the other side coming, you know. Yeah, they should. Middle one was prepared that. for that, which should kind of give Fnatic and you see JJ just hovered over that ward. Yeah. Uh, so both teams should know about both wards. Exactly. Basically. And yeah. now Storm should also say like, guys, the only reason he makes that move on me is if he has vision and he knows that nobody's behind me or that the life sealer is inside me. Because you're not just gonna watch a Storm farm those creeps if life sealer was inside of him, right? Yeah. So now when you when you have two teams like this you have a better understanding like okay each side has a ward here then you can decide like where the next role uh, road of engagement is and stuff like that so as a result both of our kind of farming cores both fanatic and secret will actually take the top lane continue to farm it up yeah mid one's gonna get bloodstone and they're gonna look for a fight yeah that's the next uh, general timing here like some sort of attempted smoke ink on tinker i'm presuming yeah i mean they gotta get this tinker eventually Storm's just gonna go for the full zip out. Um, just like very, very safe play. And both teams are just playing super safe because they're so afraid to just like get slipped up on. Now like Jeez. if you look at the net worth, like the Batriders is, has uh, fallen pretty hard because he's not getting kills anymore. And he he's already no has out. Yule Scepter on the other Titan, you see that? Yeah. I mean, that's just yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. sorry. It's not really surprising. Yeah, I guess not. Yapsor but... hits a lot of creeps. <laughs> like as much space as he makes, Yapsor is prioritized heavily. That looks like poor so as dirt all the time. Yeah. <laughs> this game he's doing all right. He's yeah. made a decent recovery of what was pretty low CS in yeah. the laning phase. That's why focusing on tankiness. Yeah, that's that's why it's not easy to like say that a certain player is like playing badly or whatever because sometimes you don't know if the general game plan is structured a little bit differently, right? Yeah. Like Fada can look worse on this team because he's gonna give up like a quarter of his farm that would normally go to him and it'll go to Fada or uh, to Yapsor instead. Right. Four man smoke up heading into the off lane jungle. So he has the bloodstone, right? So yeah, you get the bloodstone, you immediately smoke. And then you can transition it. I'm a little bit push. surprised they just roll up into the offlane jungle. I mean, that's such a common farming spot for Jero Rangers and for Tinkers. Oh, mid one. But they want to jump on him so badly. Turn Levy. They're actually going to turn on him. They go for the back line. They go for the universe first. They're going to try and pop him. Now, mid one jumps over to Turn Levy. They actually bring him back with a glimpse. Should be able to finish him off here. Fada zoning the rest of Fnatic back at bay. He's going to be able to get the slow on the DJ as well, netting them an extra kill. Secret. Huh. They managed to get the first successful big move of the mid game. That was so cool. So mid one shows he's like, oh, we were smoked, and Envy's like, okay, here's the here's the turnaround opportunity, guys. Like, because this is this is like a very fanatic move to make, right? Like everyone rotates in to take that fight immediately. Yeah. Which they've been doing. You notice when they took that shrine fight. Yeah. When they were trying to save universe, so they do the same thing. Same exact play, but this time like, secret is much better setup. It kind of reminds me of um, the way that. Greedy, and they just play pretty defensively, but they would always collide on yeah, any yeah. of those like aggressive smokes. Yeah, Envy's, Envy teams are very good at that, but this time it bit them in the ask a secret. Thought like the next layer ahead, and like this is going to be a bait that they don't quite expect to be a bait. Right, and uh, it's that was really cool. They just didn't quite see something like that, but uh, as expected, he didn't go for like first item Kai or anything like that. That, that means... item, oh, I really wish it was better. <laughs> Maybe he still goes for it and shows me that it's OP, but I don't. I feel like I've played too many games on that. Long game. jump in, grabbing Eternal Envy, and they have the dust out already. Did Ace really buy those TP rotations? Really aren't going to do a whole lot for you. Yes, he did because Storm Spirit did not have it. So, man, what a cool guy. Yeah. I bet just going to chase them this whole entire way, hoping the universe is going to be able to grab somebody as well. So on to mid one, so they will manage to finish him off, but it looks oh like both no. Southeast Asian mids are going to be end up dying here. The Glimpse back. Tinker is going to end up going down here. Yaps are going to try and protect himself with a stomp. Can't really get out of this jungle area, though, so he is eventually going to be dying 
giving himself a few more seconds with the Yules. He's actually walking away from this one. Now he finally goes down. DJ, though, he gets a little bit too close to Ace. Fauna goes ahead and zones back the rest of the universe. He's going to have to firefly himself through the trees. Pilot Die also makes a quick exit as well, but secret. I'm winning genuinely another having, engagement like that. I'm genuinely having a hard time like understanding who won that fight. It's like the Tinker and the Chen died for Storm and ET. Yeah, that's kind of even ish. But it all started off with the Draw Ranger pickoff, yeah. right? That force that, that engagement. Count. Come on, so. man! It's like <laughs> that happened ages ago. <laughs> if it's not in the battle view, it doesn't count. Yeah, if it's not in the battle view. Stats don't lie. Okay, but but my question is, we've seen Secret make two kind of aggressive, kind of like smoke-ish plays. I guess mm -hmm. that, that last one was just a Storm Spirit jump. Why aren't we seeing Fnatic match that tempo now? Why aren't they being the aggressors I'm with not some sure. sort of like, like uh, Shadow Blade smoke up with Dro? I think they slowed down the game too much. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they, they thought that they would be able to win fights anyways, so that they could... so they can play a little bit slower. But I think it's kind of hurting them because... Uh, like early on, they were using the Bat Rider, and they were the ones like laying on the aggression, right? Yeah. And you have this Shadow Blade on Envy, which lends you to believe that like they want to be able to always get the jump first. So yeah, arguably that Shadow Blade should let yeah. you set up on both Storm and Life Stealer. Yeah. This is where I think that smoke kind of disrupted their timing a lot. You know, when they took that fight right. out of the Counter Smoke, so then now they're not thinking so much. Like you lose the flow of the game. They're not thinking so much about like the game progression. It becomes a little bit more about farm, and that's kind of problematic right now for them. Oh, he's just going to be a bit too late to try and grab a Storm Spirit. He had an Invis Rune anyway in his bottle. And Where's he, the Life Stealer? Yeah, bring your bomb. An Invis Life Stealer bomb. That sounds pretty dirty. Yeah, and he has a Sun Trailer. <laughs> Secrets come equipped. They're going to do the same thing they've done before, which is kind of like back up behind Fada as he aggressively pushes down mid. Oh, he dewarded. So, but they might still have seen that in time. He might not know about that. Universe. He's gonna try and grab him here. Spirit actually tags him. He is really not sure. Yeah. About trying to make a jump like that on that storm spirit. The sentry's like barely out of range, but yeah. You ideally, if you're fanatic, you want to take these kinds of fights right now. Because you don't want the Storm to just get a BKB. It's going to be really hard to kill. So you think Universe fight. should have made that jump when they saw the Invis Storm off, off that Sentry? And that one's them? tricky because if Life Sealer is in there and just like pops out and you get glimpsed back, then you're still liable for death. It's an awkward fight. You can't. It's not easy to just take these blind fights because you don't have vision right. Yeah. You almost never want to just go for these blind jumps. There's the lasso pull, but the jump in for the Storm here. They're immediately going to drop off Ace. He starts focusing on Eternal Envy. Fortunately, heals come out from the Chen, the setback as well. So that's going to be enough to protect him. And all it means is the Elder Titan is the one who ends up dying here. Another sent back. Oh, they Good got one. that Storm Spear. Great play from Abed, able to chase him down. Now Puppy's going to be slowed down by the Sticky Napalm as well. He's going to have a hard time getting out of this. Kinetic Field trying to protect him as much as possible. Fada will actually provide some reinforcements here. Draining onto DJ. Ace slows him down just enough. They're going to be able to pick up that one kill. But Eternal Heavy standing strong, feeling that the Tinker is going to be able to back him up here. But Ace is right on top, and they do have that Shadow Blade to be able to get himself out of there. Universe, though, but the Hex already up. Now the Life Stealer in serious trouble is going to end up dying as they try to go on to Eternal Levy, but sure enough, Fnatic still had the numbers for this engagement, and show it here as Fada is actually still going to be end up dying. Oh, he, he is making such aggressive blink plays, and it is paying off big-time dividends for Fnatic. What a serious comeback in that last team fight. Yeah, that was sick for them. Now they're up 4K, and it's because we were talking about it. Like, we want to see Fnatic get the jump off, Yeah. and for once, they were able to take the fight on their terms, whereas it felt like Secret just took like three fights in a row where they were able to do whatever they wanted. But this time, like, Secret, they don't have the best save, if at all. Like, the best thing that they have working for them is, like, glimpse once uh, the Batrider jumps in. But at that point, they had already lost the fight. It's kind of cool. Abed taking up the uh, Observer Ward yeah. and planning it. There's not a lot of Bloodstone charges now on this yeah. one. And Oof. the pace of this game is, like, completely shifted since that fight. Like, Secret went in there one by one after, lost all their cores, and... I mean, this is scary for them because they couldn't afford that. They don't have this like playmaking offlaner with a big teamfight spell. Yeah, and that's a, that's why we were talking about like Fnatic. Maybe they feel comfortable because they they know that the teamfight advantage is always there. They have a bat rider. Like, this bat rider is the best teamfight hero in the game out of all ten heroes, right? Like yep. he's always going to be able to get a jump off, and there's nothing they can do about it. And when you have that knowledge like in your back pocket at all times, it frees up a lot of pressure. Because conversely, like you have a razor that's just 
walks in and like plasma fields. He has no stun. His team fight's very limited. He can't get on top of Envy. Envy, I mean, look at his item build. He's got Shadow Blade plus the Hurricane Pike. But of course, who knows? Like, Secret could do something silly at Roshan and like lose one fight, and then it swings back the other way. Like a pendulum works both ways, Austin. So as it swings towards Fnatic with this 3k gold lead, we'll see how Secret respond. As uh, we do have some sort of weird smoke setup here from Fnatic. I'm not quite sure what this is. I think they wanted to smoke and try to go for Roche, but... If you're secret, maybe you take a fight right now. You just finished BKB on Storm. That's probably your next major item timing. Yeah, because the next really big item is actually oh. going to be coming from Fnatic side. Staying long, jump in, but there is going to be the universe BKB. BKB, and he's able to pop it. It immediately goes ahead, grabs the up the hero. Elder Titan draws a big stomp, actually hitting a huge lamb numbers on the back line, but they managed to get another stomp there onto the draw ranger. If they can actually get to him, they oh, can easily finish him so off. Midwife is running a little bit low on mana. Pilai die. Oh, Fada just getting gobbled up right now. They got to deal with this secret, but they're just running out of mana for mid one he's got no more power to be able to deal with this the sight device they're going to be able to finish him off now the rest of secret quickly retreating but the damage already done fanatic they are beginning to heavily take this game does pilot die have a ghost scepter am i am i seeing that correctly yeah all right so when you're a storm there's like a few items that you absolutely hate it's like four staff yules ghost scepter yeah because if they get the ghost scepter off you pull you're actually just waiting and you have to use the majority of your mana doing nothing and so you had this guy jump in on this lion and pilot Dad was just like chill he's like all right i cannot die there's actually nothing you guys can do against my hero they committed the entire BKB duration to try to kill this guy, and oh. it did nothing. They still got that glimpse on him. That's trouble. Especially with the stomp there. They're gonna leave Envy. Alright, Envy they gives said, him a kill, but... Jackie Mao, you have stepped over the line once again. He's a habitual line stepper. <laughs> he really is. But that's okay in this game, because the true one position piece, Abed, is still doing well enough. But, man, for secret... They gotta reprioritize things because this line is not easily killable anymore. And they don't have the stun to punish his uh, his ghost scepter either. Yeah. It's funny, Pilot dies so farmed, and I'm never used to seeing Pilot die this far. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, you just. I think the problem was like Midwan didn't click on his items because, like, instinctually, Pilot dies almost always the free kill, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like, alright, so here's how the fights go. So you're saying that, that was actually two items that Secret just didn't know about, yeah, it yeah. seemed like, right? Because they, they jumped they jump universe the with the BKB. Oh, that ruined Storm. That was Storm. so bad. It ruined Storm a lot, because yeah. the initial jump is more than half your mana. And if you don't kill somebody in that, then you wasted half your mana oh, doing nothing. Oh, that long range side device. It's going to cause some serious issues. They managed to get the lasso as Ace actually gets a little bit too far forward here. Jump in from mid one. Trying to decide who to focus on. It looks like it's just going to be the Chen here. That's an easy kill. That's the freebie. And looks like they also managed to catch uh, Pilot Dai here in the stomp, but they're being very careful about this where they're not really sure how much they want to extend into this tank with the March of the Machines. It's just enough, though, with the control out for the Disruptor to be able to get that second support. But they keep it pretty calm. They don't try and go for any extra heroes out of that. They've actually still got to deal with this bottom lane push where the double, uh, double siege wagons, that's a problem. Okay, they can't anymore. So not able to take off a Roche off of this successful team fight. And it does seem like that's another issue, right? Is that they don't really have any of these heroes that helps them deal with this Tinker split push. Yeah. The idea is that Storm does, but Storm doesn't have this item like a, like an Orchid. So it's hard for him to put out enough damage. Yeah. So the initial jump matters so much, but now everyone has countered his hero. Like they're all prepared for him now. You can't just like commit the BKB to kill unless you know for a fact. Do you agree with his choice of Shiva's as the next item rather than going back for the Orchid? Uh, I think he needs it so that he can scout out the Tinker. Yeah. Otherwise, it's too hard. You're lacking in the vision department a little bit too much. Regeneration. They've got Chen on one side, or at least Chen creeps on one side, Tinker on the other. Lanes just constantly being pushed in. It's complicated right now, though, for for secret because for secret, the storm yeah. it his value in the value in storm is that you just do this like long jump you instantly burst somebody down and then it's chaotic because taking four on five fights is very hard but fanatic have 
very good anti-jump heroes now. Like this Chen can always pop the heal, which allows, for example, the Dro to get Pike off, or yeah. this Lion to get his Ghost Scepter, or this uh, Batrider to get his BKB. As soon as they got those sustain items, the Chen just looks so much stronger as a support. You try and jump somebody, he's Double just able to get the Yeah, like this. This is a little bit more complicated than it used to be. Like for Secret, the game plan was just like, we can jump always on this uh, Eternal Envy Draw Ranger and kill her. But now everyone's come so equipped to deal with that. That's no longer the same. And once she gets a BKB, the problem is further exacerbated. Now the only person that they can logistically kill is uh, this Tinker, who really doesn't show himself on the map very often. I remember um, watching some of the recent Tinker games. There was an optic game of Tinker, and it seems like everyone uh, has adjusted their playstyle with these Tinkers. The, they are just playing super duper safe, uh, especially before their blink dagger. But even then, they, they're playing super safe, and oftentimes they go for the, the push on the side lanes. Uh, sometimes their team just sets up for them, because Tinker's farm is pretty much the only farm that matters in most Tinker games. Yeah, Tinker games are dictated by Tinker. I mean, who cares if, if Drill Ranger gets, you know, that third item. In this game, I think it matters. Because you're still playing against a Tricorn yeah. from Secret. But the, the Tinker is kind of countered by the Storm. Yeah, but so it's a Tricorn that's, like, not supported by anything. Yeah. Without strong initiation, we've seen Secret have uh, really struggled. Because their only real initiation is just the, the jump in Life Sealer Bomb, which is all single target, which is heavily countered by this... Uh, this Chen and some of these disables, laser, BKB, actually they managed to grab the Razor here, but is that really the target they want to go for? They're going for the back line right now, Secret, with their BKBs are trying to deal with these supports. They're actually now focusing down onto the Draw Ranger, will manage to bring him down. The Finger of Death goes on Ace, he's being controlled up by the side of the vice right now. Abed, thinking about going for that one, is actually going to yield Scepter by Yaptor. That's a huge pickup, they can actually stop Abed from being able to get the blink out, which they do, but a setback oh. barely comes out for the Chen. He gave up his life to be able to save the Tinker, and it comes just in time. Abed Bed. Quick reaction. Immediately heals up just a little bit, goes for the push on mid. He's just trying to create any space he can because he knows secret off a of big win like that is going to get an objective of some sort. And it looks like it's going to be the ages. And right now, secret, I think they're kind of falling into that old habit where they're the ones getting these like awkward jumps on. Really back and forth game though. It's like just depends on who gets the first initial run in. Yeah. I mean, it felt like the combination of Secret being able to get a relatively good jump yes. with their Storm Spirit Life Stealer, and then on the opposing side, Fnatic made a Blink Lasso play on a Razor. Yes. A BKB Razor at that. They really, in the past, they were almost always just doing it on the Life Stealer of the Storm. Yeah. It's like the priority of these fights. It's like hard to analyze because things keep shifting. Yeah. Like, Fnatic, I think they should just stick to this idea, like, continue to run at them. You don't really need too many items, but now things have shifted because of this Aegis, of course. Once again, like, Aegis Storm is... I can't think of very many, if any, heroes that are better with the Aegis. Searching for oh, did they give it to Did they give it to Life Sealer? Oh, that's hype. Why? Would they do that? I'm not sure. Well, that's useful. I'm trying to think about it because <laughs> I was thinking about it. Like, there's not a lot of heroes that benefit from it more. And then Storm's here, yeah. Yeah. Like Storm is kind of king because you can refresh the mana pool. Here I am. Entirely. Like, uh, honestly, that's something I like. I, I'm trying to understand right now because I'm sure there's a very good reason, but I'm just not good at the game. So, or good, not good enough at the game to like quite see it like right at this moment. All right, we'll give you some time. If I had to theorize, it's probably because uh, they think that if anyone's going to be like front forward or hitting buildings, it's going to be the life sealer, mm. and so they want to make sure that if he does get jumped, uh, he always has the option when he revives to get the rage off, and they can continue to team fight. Whereas the storm will always jump in pre BKB. Yeah, that would be my logical guess behind it. it sounds like decent reasoning. We'll just see if Secret are actually going to be hitting any towers anytime soon. They've got uh, all the offlane towers 
still up. Yep. All the tier twos as well. Fnatic already positioning themselves to be able to defend out this bottom lane with a heavy push coming in from the Tinker at top lane. Process of elimination, especially mids really pushed in too. They know that Secret have got to be inside their jungle right now. Got to be looking for this push at bottom lane. They are trying to keep some presence here accordingly. See if they can actually get into a team fight, even against the Aegis. It seems like Fnatic are thinking about it, and they are going to be able to get a jump on Fana here again. They're going to be able to grab this Razor, immediately silence up. Now he does have BKB, but not willing to pop it. Looks like the physical damage is just going to be too much anyway, so he gives up his life. Really great jump, though. Fnatic making that read as soon as these heroes on Secret had to go back to defend against those mid and top lane pushes. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication, or he assumed that he could always get the BKB up, yeah. just like TP. But finally, another. I mean, this game's so back and forth. It's cool to watch. The yeah, BKB for uh, Tinker may also provide a really big swing, as that'll certainly stymie things a bit for the Storm Spirit. Yeah. Now you got a Blink Dagger on Pilot Die, who's incredibly farmed, and they're investing in the jump now too, because they realize like whoever gets the better initiation and the better follow through is going to win these team fights. And that's why everyone's investing in BKPs including this Tinker because he realizes like the first jump is very important for Secret and conversely the first jump is very important for them which is why Pi is going to go for the blink dagger. Does that mean we need additional disable on either the storm or the the life stealer to uh, follow up to to make sure that we have more than just this 2 seconds yeah, done. He's going to want he's going to want to get um Side of Side of ice. Uh, oh, 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 you're talking about the life stealer? Yeah. Okay. He either gets Abyssal or the uh, Nullifier. Okay. So when you do the initial jump, you mm. can get the further lockdown. I, li I like that Nullifier. Uh, so, like, you zip in, pop out, Nullify? Yeah. So they can't BKB. It's a longer disable, right? If you're concerned about BKBs, Nullifier yeah. is compared to the Abyssal. But he's going to get AC first, anyways. Okay. You might as well, like, get the Hypercent ready. It's a very natural progression for life stealer, anywho. Ace is like one of the first players though that I saw really experiment with the nullifier. Mm. I think he was playing like Jug or something like that. I saw yeah. him go like some weird playing kids, yeah. yeah. Lincoln's picked up. It's 18 to 14 right now, 40 minutes in. We're gonna have a five man smoke here from Secret. Excuse me, four man. With Fada actually in the offlane jungle right now. He's gonna be the one showing presence again in that mid lane. Just seems like over and over again. Maybe with the Razor's movement speed or whatever they feel like he can get to this fight every single time. The four man smoke up. She does hell. Oh, that's gonna be a big one too, especially. They easily take out Eternal Levy. Now they're gonna turn. Looks like the last orb on the Storm's here, but he got off his BKB, so he's not taking any damage whatsoever. They're gonna be able to pick up the support as well. DJ, poor Chen, just can't really do much about it. He's looking to be able to catch Abed, but. Blink, blink, blink. Oh, he found him now, but mid one is only going to be able to see Pylite die from that position. So, looks like that is going to be the support they pick up. As long as they see him here, Kinetic Field. Pylite die, hoping to actually kill Puppy before he can get the glimpse off, but it looks like he's still going to get caught. Ghost Scepter buys him a little bit of time. He actually goes ahead and throws down the Static Storm. Huh? There's some hate. Some lingering feelings <laughs> from last year. He already blew the finger of death and everything. Yeah, exactly. He was just that afraid of being impaled? No, dude, it's like the counter. It's like, you'll finger me even though you can't kill me? Well, let me show you the next progression. <laughs> it's not about... It's about so he, a message. He, 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 he throws down the ultimate and style TPs away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about sending a message. It's not about the act of doing something, Austin. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't have to lead to something. <laughs> Sometimes it's meant to inspire people. You know, ah. you see your captain lay down this, like, sick blue cloud on the ground, <laughs> and suddenly, like, you understand, like, I will follow this man to the ends of the earth. Oh, captain, my captain. <laughs> I mean, if anything, if any, any captain in Dota is going to be throwing down uh, strong acts of aggression as a display of leadership, that's got to be Bobby. Oh, I like that. That was good. BKB for Fada as he's lassoed up. Jump in the back line. Mid one immediately oh. goes for that kill on the Troll Ranger. And again, it's just the same old song. They jump the Troll Ranger, they kill the Chen. Now they try and pursue for more. Abed, he's going to be far enough away. He's going to be okay. Yeah, it feels like now Fnatic, their jumps just. They do not feel as clean, like at all. Yeah. They don't have the damage either. 
Like, if you have the Tinker right after and he doesn't get the BKB off on Razor, then you can just kill him by Refresh Hexing. But the amount of time it takes to, like, kill that core, Fada has so many defensive items. <laughs> I don't really know. Does. It's so hard. To... <laughs> okay, so remember how we talked about how Fada just runs at you and he doesn't really care? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the problem is, like, when you play against the stuff. Oh, Abed completed that TP underneath the Shivas as well as the field coming out from Fada, but they are going to be able to fight it out with the BKB, and now the rest of the team is coming in with the Hex already on. Stormseer is going to be jumping into the back line to grab Abed. They're going to be able to take him out. Ace is just dealing out so much damage with his AC build. Oh, Physical damage that Fnatic cannot possibly match or stand up to for down on the side of Fnatic, opening up an easy push on the high ground for Secret. Yeah, Fnatic have to be so disappointed with how things have gone, because it felt like for such a long time their team fight would be superior in this regard, but they keep they keep being forced to jump on this Razor, because we talked about how Fauna just runs down lanes, <laughs> yeah. so like, you don't really want to ignore him, but at the same time, like the only way they were winning fights was when they were jumping for example, like they lead off with the storm or onto the life the right? Yeah. Like they can't do that because in secret they just started adapting a little bit more and they're like, well, we'll show you this razor. Do you want him? Like, and it's a lemon. You don't actually want to take that. But they don't know that, so they're just like, okay, I guess we'll just burst this razor. I mean, we've seen like the same move from Secret over and over and over again. We're, we're seeing no buybacks, which obviously we know there is none. So Secret, they wise up to that real quickly. They're like, well, uh, screw taking game. two lanes of rags. Let's go ahead and take the game. Yeah, and that's no. it. GG. So Secret, they continue their their role so far. Of course, this is a best of three. So not everything has been determined quite yet, but so far so good as... I mean, this is the most that I've seen them get tested in. It, it definitely did seem like Fnatic was giving Secret a bit of a run for their money. That was a first game. Yeah. For I thought I honestly thought that Fnatic had a very good shot. Like, that storm was so incredibly far. Yeah. And at some point in time, it, it did seem like the that last, like, five, ten minutes of the game, it just turned into Tinker versus the Tricor of yeah. Secret, and he just couldn't possibly stand up. They were not on the same page either. Yeah. Like the, the, the Tinker wasn't in position to follow up on a lot of these initiations. Mm. And it's just a, like Fnatic, I don't know, They got there was like some weird complacency that existed. And then the game plan starts to fall apart. You keep going on to this Razor who has demonstrated that he doesn't really care if he dies. Yeah. And he's also like the tankiest guy in the world. He's like Hood, SNY, Lincoln's BKB. Yeah. That, is, that is a struggle to kill that man. <laughs> And at the end of the day, it's still not one of the big carries, right? It's still Fada. Doesn't it's care. still the three position on the team. I know so. Fada thinks. He's just thinking it was like... Yeah. <laughs> cool, my good dudes. All right, well, you feeling good about Fnatic heading into game number two? I think Fnatic... Like, all these teams are in this, like, weird zone where it feels like they're, like, on the cusp, but they can't quite do it. And yeah. until you do it, then it doesn't quite matter. And Secret is still a very good team. Taking right. two games in a row off them. People haven't been able to do that in a while. Let's see if Fnatic is able to find the hidden key to victory here over Secret. We're going to have a break for Fnatic. We're going to head back to the panel. Predator takes you to the edge. You make the leap. Summon your strength.